Hi there, welcome to the Top Dog Tips YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you the number one reason that your dog is overweight when using commercial dog food and how to get your dog back on track. Today in 2022, having an overweight dog has become so common that we think it's funny and cute and overall normal. In fact, I bet when you actually see a dog at a healthy weight, you go, oh my God, that dog is so skinny. When in reality, you're just so used to seeing overweight dogs that you're just used to seeing them more huskier and bigger. I know I see plenty of them at the beach. Now, I go to the beach every morning and see dog owners consistently playing with their dogs. To me, it takes a lot of discipline to take your dog out there for about an hour, like some of these pet owners, and make sure they get plenty of exercise. The most common dog breeds that I see that are overweight are Labradors, Beagles, Frenchies, Bulldogs, Corgis, and Aussies. So if these dogs are getting plenty of exercise in the morning, why do I see so many overweight dogs? Well, have you heard of the saying in fitness, you can't out-train a crappy diet? In my humble opinion, that's exactly what I think is happening with our pets. It has to do with the food that they eat, whether it's their kibble, or those extra snacks they get from table scraps when you feed your dog extra little bit of pizza because you don't want the food to go to waste. All of those have calories and it adds up. Just like I learned in fitness, even supplements and snacks like I'd eat like acai bowls or smoothies or one of those protein bars, they all have calories. And at the end of the day, when you aren't looking the way you want and you're putting all this effort into the gym and cardio, there's a good chance you're not tracking your calories. The same thing goes for dogs. But first, let me talk about kibble. I've stated in previous videos, I am not a fan of generic commercial dry dog food. The food is lacking nutrients from animal protein, has synthetic vitamins and minerals, and to make up for uh, the lack of protein, it is loaded with carbohydrates. Now there's plenty of debate around the topic of dogs being carnivores, but let's put this to bed and just agree to the fact that dogs need mostly protein and fat and very little carbs. Oddly enough, you never see carbohydrates on the guaranteed analysis list and on top of that, the AAFCO has no minimum or maximum that is determined as healthy for the dog. However, you'll see the ingredients like whole grain rice or oat flour or potatoes. Well, you see so much of it is because they have extruded the kibble and then to make up for the nutrients lost, they add carbohydrates back into the food so they can meet the protein requirements. These starches more than likely have what is called a high glycemic index. A glycemic index is a measure that determines a food's source's ability to raise blood sugar. And when blood sugar is raised, insulin is turned on. The higher the glycemic index, the bigger the raise in blood sugar, which means more insulin is released to lower blood sugar. Now there are problems with chronically raised insulin levels, but that's for another video. Now, if you didn't take a basic health class in school, when insulin is raised, it tells the body, we better stop burning fat as fuel and then take this incoming food and store it as fat. As you can see, if your dog's insulin levels are constantly spiked, it doesn't matter if you have your dog exercise for 30 minutes or longer, they will gradually put on weight. And that's if you exercise them. Imagine if you didn't. The solution to this problem is to start learning how to read dog food labels and look for foods with less carbohydrate. To figure out the carbohydrate percentage, you take the number 100 and you subtract the following equation. Now this little equation is in parentheses, so whatever the sum of this addition is, you take 100 and subtract it by that number. So you take the crude protein percentage, the crude fat, and then you take the moisture percentage and the ash, and that gives you the carbohydrate percentage. If you feed your dog canned food, good for you. Your dog has a less chance of consuming carbohydrates in excess because canned dog food doesn't need carbohydrates. And chances are, canned dog food almost always has more protein than dry kibble. A good rule of thumb is to be no more than 30% for kibble and 7.5% for canned dog food as far as protein. Now the second part of the equation is to weigh your dog now and then pick your dog's ideal weight. A healthy weight loss journey is losing about three to 5% of their body weight per month. Then you weigh that dog at their current weight and you pick an ideal weight using that three to 5% rule. Once you have that figured out, figure out how many calories a dog at that ideal weight 
should be consuming. First, you need to figure out your dog's RER and MER based on that ideal weight. RER stands for resting energy requirements and MER stands for minimum energy requirement. RER is the number of calories your dog would need, let's just say, if they decided to lay around and rest all day. MER is the amount of calories your dog would need to maintain. MER is the amount of calories your dog would need to maintain their body weight. Here's the first part of the equation. To figure out the ideal weight in pounds, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna convert their ideal weight from pounds to kilograms. So you would divide the ideal weight by 2.2, which gives you the weight in kilograms. Calculate the resting energy requirements based on that ideal weight. So the equation would be figuring out the ideal weight or target weight in dogs for kilograms using that division. And then you would use an exponent or to the 0.75 power or three-fourths power. You figure that out and then you times the sum of that by 70. And start at the calories you give your dog with kibble or canned dog food with snacks and treats included. And stop feeding your dog processed and prepared table scraps like pizza, the remains of your burger with a bun, food that has been salted or has butter, etc. Now, the reason why is because what you feed them and you think it's a small treat actually adds up to be quite a bit of calories for their body weight. Just to give you an example, I found this one. If your dog weighs about 20 pounds and you feed it one ounce of cheese, it is the equivalent of giving an average person about a burger and a half to eat. Now, I don't know the weight of this person, but this is just to give you an idea. So let's summarize what we just went over. Unfortunately, according to recent surveys, about 52% of the dog population in the US are obese or overweight. However, there are many owners who have overweight dogs and they still make sure they get plenty of exercise. So what's the deal? Well, just like with humans, it has to do with what they are consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. The commercial dog food industry definitely doesn't do any favors using carbohydrates to bind the processed kibble together. So if your dog is overweight, do the equation I showed you earlier and find out the carbohydrate percentage of your dog food for canned or dry. And if it's high, find another option. And secondly, you need to start tracking your dog's calories. If your dog is overweight, use this diagram here and then figure out the ideal diet that you want for your dog using the equation I showed you earlier. Now, make sure you speak with your veterinarian before beginning a weight loss diet. The next part is to find the ideal weight for the dog like I showed you before. Remember, say you have a 25 pound dog. If your dog loses two pounds, that is a lot of weight if you're comparing the equivalent to someone like me. I weigh 204 pounds and the equivalent of a 25 pound dog losing two pounds is if I went from 204 to 187. Now that's almost 20 pounds. I would probably look a lot different. I'd look a lot leaner. I'd probably, my cheeks would be more sunken in. I'd feel a lot lighter. So you have to take that into consideration. If you solve this one thing, then your dog will be in a great spot where they can feel better and overall the overall energy will be higher and they will be a lot happier. If you enjoy this video, then you'll probably enjoy this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our content. If you find our content interesting, if you learn something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. That's how we continue to grow our following. And with that, I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.